from factory fresh plastic to a detailed paint job, let's bring this model to life. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. Let's start this bad boy with a generous uh, prime job uh, using AK Interactive Black Primer. Uh, it's probably my go-to uh, primer uh, on the market right now. It's the third generation, so it's an awesome uh, primer. And also, don't forget the wheels and the tracks. Uh, basically, you're just covering uh, everything in black, so you're going to have uh, a a really nice uh, starting point uh, when you're gonna add uh, some uh, post shading or pre shading or the, the base color after that. The next step I will use premium uh, white primer from Vallejo and I will do some kind of um, I would say a pre shading before we apply the base paint so by adding some white it's gonna give some shade already in some variation to your paint job. Um, it's not something you absolutely have to do, but it's something that I do, I would say most, most of the time because it's already giving me some, uh, some detail and some shade into my, uh, my paint job. So I really love to do it and there's different way of doing it. There's the zenithal, uh, priming like the figure painting guy, uh, are doing, but in this case, in the model armor, um, uh, I would say uh, field it's easier to do some panel uh, like we call it the panel lighting so basically we're just gonna add some white uh, not all around your vehicle but on the spot that uh, will uh, bring some light or they are enlightening uh, by the sun or a light depending on the, what kind of diorama you're building for the base coat, I'm using Dunkel Gelb and Sand Yellow. So I will say 80% uh, uh, Dunkel Gelb and 20% uh, Dark uh, Sand Yellow. The only reason why is I didn't have uh, Dark Yellow. Um, and the thing is with the, the uh, I would say the lighter tone of Dunkel Gelb that I have, it's kind of a uh, in the the pale side, so uh, I really need something to be a little bit more uh, yellowish. So that's why I'm using a sand yellow. So don't forget to add some thinner and also um, to uh, mix it uh, pretty good and thin down your paints. This way, your airbrush will run really smooth. Um, basically with this uh, color it's the base paint so we're just gonna paint all our model uh, everywhere so this way we're gonna have um, a really nice coat uh, of paint uh, all around your vehicle just don't put that much leave some black or some really black and white uh, kind of a I would say translucent uh, coat of paint uh, not uh, like a super um, super uh, art paint job and things like that so just leave some some black or some white under your base coat again it's only a matter of details and like I said since we're doing uh, we done uh, a pre shading before our base coat it's uh, really nice to get uh, some piece of this pre-shading in our base coat because we're gonna do a second layer a little bit later of uh, kind of a post shading I would say uh, it's not really a post shading but it's kind of a shading uh, with a different tone and a different color uh, the wheels I uh, just try to avoid the rubber part of the wheel just make sure that you will paint uh, inside the rubber band uh, that the wheels are uh, all around and like I said don't be too hard with your paint uh, we're gonna basically looking to leave uh, some details now it's gonna be a mix of again Dunkel Gelg 20-80% uh, uh, flat yellow 15% and uh, German red brown 
this way it's gonna be a little bit more yellow and that's the look that uh, we're looking for because the West Bay is kind of a really uh, on the yellowish part of, uh, of a paint job and this case just do kind of a gentle mist of uh, with your airbrush because you don't have uh, to paint uh, all around the vehicle just basically focus on the highlights so all the raised area the panel and different things like that it's only a really a small mist that we do with this uh, post shading now it's time to paint all the equipment the bomb and all the different details uh, on the vehicle um, I decide to go with the uh, the color uh, uh, green and a little bit of aluminum for the tip of the bombshell but uh, in this case for example with the the um, the tools and things like that I'm using a different tone so it's gonna be a um, different tone and for the wood I'm always using a combination of old wood from Vallejo it's probably the best base color if you want to paint uh, some tools or even for example you want to paint some um, some guns and things like that all wood it's always a really good color um, I'm always uh, also not always but also um, painting all the the spare tracks uh, on, fr on the front of the vehicle and all the tools and different things like that will be with gunmetal gray. Uh, I'm using a flesh wash uh, to do some kind of a details on the wood part of uh, our, uh, our tools. This way uh, you will see when it's going to be dry, the finish look absolutely amazing. And with uh, the weathering that we will do in the next video, like the pin wash and uh, the chipping and everything like that, the look is absolutely amazing now it's time for decal uh, decals I'm always using the same kind of solution I'm using microset first before I apply the decals and I will use microsol after uh, the decal is on your vehicle I did the full video on how to uh, deal with decals uh, I will put uh, a link in the top right corner if you want to uh, see it. I have those two bottles for I would say almost 10 years and they are still three quarter full. So now with the oil dot filter, uh, it's kind of a way of doing some filter. I'm using oil paint. Um, it's a lot easier. The only thing you have to do with oil paint, you just have to basically put a dot of oil onto uh, a cardboard and let it uh, let the, the oil uh, sunk into the cardboard this way it's not going to be soggy and things like that you're going to have uh, the pure color I'm using burnt amber black and white uh, in this case because the uh, the color of the vehicle is yellow and don't forget also with oil paint you have to use um, white spirit a regular uh, enamel thinner will I would say it's gonna work but it's not the uh, the best thing now if you don't have a I would say kind of a, a cross um, uh, paintbrush we're just gonna basically do it ourselves I use a basically in my pile of, uh, of uh, brush that I bought uh, on Amazon or whatever it's a big pile and I will do the uh, the um, the perpendicular uh, cross line myself with a pair of scissors. This way, it's the <clears throat> easiest way uh, for removing the dot uh, filter with the uh, the uh, white spirit uh, thinner. It's the I would say the best size of uh, any uh, brush. And that's what we have so far after we applied the dot and it's a super easy technique you're just gonna remove I would say most uh, of all the dot that you already did on your uh, model and it's gonna leave some kind of a, a streaking mark uh, and it's gonna give you some uh, some variation to your paint job 
this way it's uh, it's gonna act uh, as a filter and honestly instead of having uh, like kind of a, a pure yellow um, color uh, just by using dot filters um, it's a super easy method and honestly it's gonna give uh, always a super nice result so that's um, the video for you guys I hope you enjoyed this one and the next video will be about uh, pin washes, um, chipping, uh, we're gonna probably do another video on dust and mud and I just hope you like it and don't forget to subscribe and leave uh, a like if you enjoyed this video.